after her. Uh, Florida Representative Republican Byron Donalds on the Oversight Committee uh, that will be checking into what the government is saying and not saying when it comes to UFOs, okay? Newsweek, again, has a poll. 57% of you um, believe that uh, they're keeping things from us. Only 57%? Of course they know more. You know they know more, okay? Um, let's, let's talk about this, all right? Let's bring in Byron Donalds. It's good to see you, Congressman. Um, do you agree that you know that they know things. I'm not talking about little green men. I'm not saying you're going to peel off a mask and be from another planet, but that they know things that they say that we don't need to know and that that's not right and we should know more. Uh, first of all, Chris, good to be back with you. Government does know more. I think they know a lot more than they're letting on. And I think it's important for uh, not just the American people to know about this, but I think, frankly, for everybody on the planet to know about this. I mean, listen, let me take a step back. We've been dealing with sci-fi movies for a very long time. I think the culture and, you know, people are kind of accustomed to thinking that there's something else out there than just us. And so if there's information that the government has, yeah, they should share it with us. Right. Look, guys like you and me, we believe in a higher power. Right. So there would be an arrogance in thinking that we were the only planet <laughs> that figured it out. You know, so I'm open to whatever it is. But what I'm much more certain about and I feel the same way about the JFK assassination files, there's no way that it was just Lee Harvey Oswald. And the answer becomes it's not a conspiracy theory. It's that the government has made a determination that it's going to look bad if this gets out. It's going to embarrass agencies. Uh, now, burning sources, getting people in the field hurt, that's different. That's different. But that's also a pretty high bar. Now, what can you do to get them to tell us more uh, rather than having someone whisper in your ear, hey, Congressman, hey, Congressman, you know, uh, you're going to really mess people up at the CIA, at the FBI, at the NSA. You know, you're, you're going to really, uh, you know, ruffle some feathers here. How do you get the answers? Well, I think it always starts with oversight hearings and investigations. That's really step one. I think number two is going to be, frankly, if what we can deliver in these hearings is compelling enough, will you get the public to start clamoring for more information? At the end of the day, the stuff that's classified, that comes from the White House. And so the White House is going to have to make a determination about what they're going to be prepared to, to release. But if people want to see this information, and you have members of Congress, House and Senate want to see this information, you got governors who want to see this information. It puts a lot of pressure on the White House um, on an, in the intelligence community to begin to start releasing some of this stuff. I think that's the path. It starts with investigations that are open to the public, to the public, and I think that we're going to start doing that stuff in oversight. When does the hearing happen? Uh, that I don't know. That's going to be a question for uh, Chairman Comer. Uh, but I know some of my colleagues on the Oversight Committee who've been working with him and the committee staff. I think it's coming sometime this year, but I don't have an actual date. Why not? I mean, I know it's not your job to, to produce the date, but what's, why not? Like, why don't they want to just do it? They know the American people care about it. Well, I mean, it's because a lot of stuff has to get scheduled, Chris. And so, you know, right now we're in the middle of NDAA, appropriation season. There's a lot of stuff that's going on. I also sit on financial services. So we're going to be doing a lot of financial services hearings uh, this month. So part of it is just when do you have time to convene the hearing? The other part is do you have your ducks in a row? You don't want to step out into some hearing, only have a tidbit of information, and frankly have it blow up in your face in the middle of the hearing. I mean, that's just not a good thing to do. I mean, sometimes it's, it's pretty cool when that happens happens, but the reality is you want to make sure you have your information prepared to be released before you start the hearing. It's one of the reasons I love you, Representative. Spoken like a guy who's new to the Washington, D.C. game, because these cats have hearings all the time that are going nowhere. I mean, look, that's my frustration about the Hunter Biden stuff. I've offered Comer and Jordan, uh, and, you know, because they're in the leadership, but I make the offer to you, uh, you know, as we're getting to know each other better. Bring on your proof. I'll give you the whole show. I, I have no problem covering the story. Uh, I think it is troubling that you see payments as uh, Comer has suggested, but not given me the proof. So I got to be a little careful because, you know, a politician can say things and then he can change. If I run with it, uh, you know, I can lose my job. So I think it's troubling that if he's right and there are transfers to multiple members of the Biden family from Chinese companies or Romanian or Ukraine, wherever companies, 
that's really troubling and Joe Biden should have to answer for it. Um, but you got to show the proof so that we can make the case to the American people and let them decide. I mean, it's fair bar, isn't it? Uh, it's fair bar, and that's why in the Oversight Committee what we're doing right now is now we're in the process of actually trying to track down the money flow. Please understand, according to the FBI's confidential human source, the reason why the Biden family sent the money or had the money sent through multiple accounts is to hide it from investigators. The confidential human source says that the Burisma executive sent it through this account chain because it would take a decade for investigators to find the money flow. We already know that the IRS whistleblower said that they wanted to bring up Hunter Biden on felony tax evasion charges. That was watered down by the Department of Justice. We also know that the IRS whistleblower, who was a supervisor for the investigative unit, he has said that they saw the transactions of money coming from uh, uh, CFC, the Chinese energy company, to Hunter Biden. We already know that exists. And right. one of the big things that just broke now is that you have the the whistleblower is now being indicted under FARA for people who don't know what FARA is that's not being a registered foreign agent which is a crime in right. the United States but here's the question right if Hunter Biden was getting money from foreign companies like Burisma at all and he wasn't registered as a foreign agent isn't he too in violation of FARA I think so and so these are all the things that you have but to make a complete picture you got to start to track the money down you, this is what I will say. Right. They did this on purpose to conceal the money trail from the American people. We have to track so, it down. And it's pretty clear now that the FBI knew about this for years and they did not go through the process of tracking the money down. So several things. One, um, better than tracking the money is show that the FBI didn't try to track it down. That's even better for the American people, by the way, um, because that shows that they, they didn't have the intent to pursue. Uh, two, you can do business abroad and not be registered with FARA, but it is a legitimate question about uh, what did Hunter, Hunter Biden do and not do. Fine. Um, the money alone and the transfers uh, may well not be illegal, but it doesn't mean that politically uh, it couldn't be seen the wrong way and make a difference in an election. And that's enough for me. Now, I want the documents because I don't love the sources. I don't love how Weiss came out and contradicted the IRS guy. And I don't like what I read in this indictment about the other guy. Uh, if a third of this is true in this indictment against the, uh, the, the other whistleblower, he's got trouble legally and has not told the truth a lot if a third of this is true. So that's why I want the documents. But now I have a political question for you. I agree with all of your suspicions and why Biden should be answering. In fact, in fact, I think it makes the needle go like this in terms of is Joe Biden going to run or not? I think it's starting to go towards no, he's not going to run. Why? Because he's old. He's tired. He's obviously not out there making the case and defending himself against these things. And maybe it's starting to get too heavy uh, with Hunter. and He wants to protect his kid. He's a, but the needle's moving for me. But here's my problem with you. You support Donald Trump. And I think that all the same suspicions apply to him. So if you want better, why don't you find somebody who doesn't have these kinds of things steeped up all around him? There are other Republicans out there who don't have the same baggage of exactly this nature, which bothers you about Biden, and rightly so. Well, let me be very clear. What, what we've seen with Donald Trump, conversely, with Joe Biden is that you have elements of FBI, you have elements of the Department of Justice who have been covering up for Joe Biden. They've been covering up for years, frankly. That's very concerning, number one. Talk to me about one federal agency that's been covering up for Donald Trump. That's never occurred. Frankly, you have elements of the DOJ who are constantly leaking information to the press about what's in these indictments and what they were presenting towards the grand jury to try to shape public opinion. That's number one. Number two, the issue with the Biden family is very clear. There is no business that the Biden family has been involved in except politics. So the one that's more concerning than any is that you have the Burisma executive telling the confidential human source that they paid the money to the Bidens to get the prosecutor off their back in Ukraine so they can raise capital in the United States. And two years after that document is written, Joe Biden's bragging about the fact that he got the prosecutor fired. That's number two. You have no documentation, not even any allegations 
frustration around Donald Trump for that. Number three, around the documents case, considering Donald Trump, and let me, I want to be clear on this and fair. Every president takes documents. Every president has taken classified documents. Presidents do have a five-year window to review their documents. What happened here was the National Archives went to the Department of Justice, and the Department of Justice went to the White House Counsel to basically get the executive privilege removed from Donald Trump so they could raid Mar-a-Lago. Why do that? He was only out of the White House less than a year and still going through his documents. You do that if you want to politicize it. That is the difference between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, because while the exec, while the administrative state has been covering for Joe Biden, they've been going after Donald Trump. And I just explained it to you very clearly. You explained your argument uh, clearly, and I gave you the time to do that. I don't agree with certain aspects of it. I think that if it were you, um, you would have been uh, talking to federal authorities a lot sooner than Donald Trump was. Uh, because they gave him a lot of chances to return things that did not fall under any Presidential Papers Act. And he should have known it. And now in these tapes, it seems like he did have an indication that he knew it. And do I think it's the biggest deal in the world? No. Do I think Donald Trump kept these things because he wanted to sell them to some foreign enemy or something like that? No, I don't. I think it's just him wanting to be defiant uh, and thinking it'll work for him with the base. I don't know that it was worth it, but that's his political calculation to make. Do I think he's going to go to jail? Uh, I hope not, because I don't know how that would help the rule of law or help anything else in this country. Doesn't mean that I don't think he did things that were wrong, but to me, it's a more sophisticated question than it is for others. Now, in terms of why I see, you know, why I would see Trump versus Biden and who's dirty, I'm just saying, isn't it time to get somebody without the baggage? Uh, you're going to get plenty of indications that the Trump administration was trying to use different agencies to go after perceived enemies as well. Um, and maybe that's just how people use power these days. I don't know. Then why not pick another person who doesn't have the baggage, the administration baggage, the family baggage, and the personal baggage? Why can't you do better than Trump? Well, one, let me let me go back for a moment. If there was evidence that Donald Trump, when he was president, was using the power of his office to go after his enemies, politically speaking, mind you, don't you think that would have been leaked by now? They're leaking everything else yeah, on him. Yeah, by John and that's never Kelly. Come up. You've when he was any on under person. oath. You've not any when career he was person. John who, Kelly you just any career said person it. Who's released information saying? Hold on, let me. I'm gonna be clear with you. You don't have any career okay, person but leaking that. information, coming out as a whistleblower, saying this, saying that, saying a third. Those things were not clear. If he was going to go after anybody, he could have went after Hillary Clinton and forced his attorney general to do that. He didn't do that. As a matter of fact, they said, you know what, we're just going to move along because she's not president. They made their decision. We don't want to criminalize politics, even though she did violate the Espionage Act. Let's be very his clear. His chant they was didn't do lock that. her up, but it's happening to representative. But it's happening to him now. But. But yeah, but that's politics. We say a, a lot of things happen in campaign speeches. The question you're asking is, what did he do when he had the power? And when he had the power, and John he did Kelly not says the he asked to go after enemies opponent. using government it. agencies, and Kelly told him not to, and they had to talk him down. That's that's what we know. Uh, their Listen, butt for uh, General but Kelly. He, but Maybe did, you're having a different did, story. Did, but last did word to it you. happen? Did it happen? Chris, did it happen? The answer is no. But back to the core of your question, picking somebody else. The reality is, is that Donald Trump is the person in our party who can step in day one and get the job done for our country. He can step into these foreign policy issues that Joe Biden has created, frankly. You want to talk about Iran, you want to talk about China, the war in Ukraine, what happened in Afghanistan, etc. Donald Trump can step in day one and actually help to ameliorate these issues because he already All did I'm the job is, once. And I think everybody can acknowledge the country was a much safer place when he was president of the United States, and so was the world. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.